Okay, so first up, we have safe moon. Perhaps this is all too obvious an example of Ponzinomics, but it's still instructive because it gives you a clear illustration of how some simple yet creative supply mechanics can reward speculation, and indeed how features like this can come to be marketed positively as a rational defense for speculation. Anyway, this chart here shows you just how safe SafeMoon was. It launched at a price of, I don't even know what that number is, reached an old time high of some other number I can't pronounce, which delivered an 11,000 fold capital gain, and which left people with a 99.95% loss on that position um, relative to today's price. Yet at its peak, this project was trading almost half a billion dollars daily. So how did it get that big? Well, there certainly were lots of influencers recruited to push this token, but they needed a story to sell. And that story was all in the tokenomics. Here's the setup. Anytime that SafeMoon was exchanged, a 10% tax would be collected. Consider that a disincentive to sell. Now, half of that would go to increasing the liquidity reserves that facilitate trading on decentralized exchanges. The other half would go to holders of SafeMoon in proportion to their share of the total token supply. That's incentive to hold. But here's the trick. When the token launched, about 22% of total supply was held by a single wallet that developers could verifiably prove that nobody had access to. And that meant that any tokens that arrive in this wallet will stay there forever. This wallet had more tokens than anybody else right from the very start and would never sell. So as more and more people buy and sell the token, more distributions get paid out. And the sum effect of this is that the number of tokens in active hands decreases over time with more of the tokens ending up in this sealed burn wallet. All this makes for a circulating supply which is deflationary and deflationary at an accelerating pace. Another additional incentive to hold. Now proponents argued that as long as demand held up, the price would rise over time. And thanks to the aggressive underlying mechanics, this would create enough demand to keep that price rising. So which of our red flags show up here? It's very clear to see that on the demand side, there is absolutely nothing going on here except a case for speculative gain. But the case for speculation this time is interesting. Unlike other meme coins like Doge or Shiba, project promoters aren't just appealing to community spirit or being part of a giant internet prank here. SafeMoon had real underlying mechanics that were spelled out in transparent, unbreakable code which created a rationalization of the speculative thesis. This pulled off a great marketing trick because it made speculation seem rational, as if it were a sure thing or a safe moon, if you will. So that's a clear red flag on the demand side. What about the supply side? Well, we've seen that the demand case was underpinned by supply mechanics. So this unambiguously falls foul of one of our red flags as well. Watching out for supply mechanics that amplify and sustain speculative demand. It's also interesting to observe how these supply mechanics were tuned. They were calibrated to produce low but noticeable payments for small holders at trading volumes that were lower than the highest profile meme coins at that time. That allowed proponents of the project to demonstrate how fantastic rewards would follow if trading volumes would rise to the level of those other meme coins. In their minds, this was sure to happen since those other meme coins didn't have clever tokenomics working to ratchet up the prices. Another red flag shows up when we look at SafeMoon's indiscriminate distribution of rewards. Now in this case, the rewards were funded by transaction taxes and so were non-inflationary. But nevertheless, the indiscriminate nature of these rewards likely helped draw in a speculative crowd. Anyway, all it took for this to fall apart was for demand to fall weight faster than the burning could catch up to support the price. And on the way down, the automatic liquidity payments probably helped push the price down even faster. But at this point, we don't get much value explaining how that worked. 
it was all over.